the downtown murals were more uh, part of the identity series. And that was really a, a unique, uh, um, unique kind of project in a lot of ways. So, I mean, we were contracted by the city of Tucson. Um, we had been in dialogue with them for many years about doing this project and had advocated it for a long time. And I, I think it was just a kind of a convergence. So it happened to be symbiotic that somebody came in, Camila came in and had the same kind of vision. They applied for a grant and were able to partner up with us. Um, it started because a friend of mine uh, sent me some pictures from Richmond, Virginia and they have a mural program there and I kind of thought to myself, well, wouldn't it be great if we could somehow institute this in Tucson and right around the same time there was a grant opportunity that came about um, through the Tohono O'odham Nation and um, our office applied and we were fortunate enough to get it. Um, we received $50,000 from the Tohono O'odham Nation and um, we raised an additional $5,000 um, from Visit Tucson and we also had some in-kind services from uh, the Downtown Tucson Partnership, Graffiti Protective Services. Um, we were able to put together this uh, pretty robust program where our goal was to have eight to ten really large-scale high-quality murals in and around our downtown in order to create visual interest, um, provide a deterrent to tagging or graffiti, and also try to get, um, try to build upon, you know, the different infrastructure improvements and new developments that have been happening downtown. We uh, began the program about um, a year ago, um, and well, a little bit more than a year ago, and um, we had the help of, we contracted with the Tucson Arts Brigade to kind of be the artist manager for the program. So the, the purpose of the, uh, it was multifold. I mean, there was the beautification element, there was creating landmarks, creating destinations. For us, it was also realizing a long-time goal of hiring artists to work in schools, neighborhoods, community centers. So our real goal is how do we get artists to work? How do we retain talent in Tucson? We did a call to artists uh, from throughout Arizona and it was eligible to anybody that was an Arizona artist. Um, and they could apply and um, we had over 80 entries I believe uh, and we juried it down to a, a pool of, um, of leading artists. Um, for a lot of them it was their first time ever I think for all of them doing such a large mural with the exception of two of the uh, kind of veteran muralists uh, Nikki Glenn and uh, uh, um, Luis Menya. We were looking for artwork that would um, kind of uh, pay attention to Tucson's past, but also recognize where the downtown area is going. And so I think that's, um, you know, you see the, you see some more traditional murals that have kind of the um, Mexican-American flair to it, and then you have, you know, some pretty modern murals, um, the, you know, Jackalope on the Rialto, um, and then you have the Agave Lady over on Benjamin Plumbing Supply, which you know pays tribute to the landscape in the desert, um, but yet has a really modern application. So we got a really wide variety of, of types of murals, um, and everything from uh, Tournay, Kaiser Wolf. So Tournay's mural really talked about many different cultures, and it was it's at eye level and she had a lot of people participating as, as the mural went on. So it was a very kind of dynamic thing and, and it represents the, the kind of multicultural-ism uh, uh, of, of Tucson. Isaac Caruso, his was very whimsical. He comes out of Mesa. His was over on Scott Avenue. And the building owner, John Wesley Miller, and he just hit it off really well. You know, their aesthetics matched. And that mural is really neat because it was a bird and we wanted to keep it simple because we knew all the people in the office buildings would be looking down at it. Um, so that design uh, worked out really well there. But each of these were kind of curated and there was a lot of, you know, the artists really led the process though. We, we allowed the artists to be the experts and to really direct that whole process and relied on their expertise. Now the life of a mural, of these murals, is slated to be three years. So again, that's, you know, at that point we have to, you know, the, I think that, that 
you know, I had this conversation earlier today, and I think that that those murals are like part of Tucson now, and it's I don't think they're going anywhere. One of the great things about this project is that it's um, allowed other people to take on doing murals themselves. You know, I think that once we were able to, you know, through all the different partnerships that we had, once we were able to successfully execute a high quality project, people realized that, you know, there, there are great artists in town that can do these large scale murals. And, you know, you saw a mural go up over at the Julian Drew block that we had nothing to do with. And then you see Joe Padgett's mural going up over by um, 7th Avenue Commons. And those are all things that I think, you know, kind of got people thinking about, hey, you know, what walls can we activate by having murals? So I think that's one of the benefits of the project, but basically creating visual interest, you know, getting people excited about being downtown and just enjoying the art that our community can provide. Hi, so my name is Joe Padgett. I'm a muralist and an artist here in Tucson. I started painting when I was 21, so I guess it's been about 16 years, something like that. Uh, and then I've been doing this full time for about 14 years. I was trying to paint a whole bunch of murals along this corridor where aviation is coming through. And so this wall was one of the ones that I had my eye on for the last few years. And I started talking to the owner of the building, uh, sending him sketches, and he finally really liked this design. And so I put it on Kickstarter and just private people funded it. You know, it got like over 300 donations. And uh, so now I'm painting it. Uh, the concept actually came from my fiance. And she had the idea of having this woman's dress turn into the sunset as she was riding her bike. And then I kind of added all the rest of it to the, the scene. Uh, I think I've got about 10 work days into it right now. So I'm trying to get it done by the end of next week, which gives me another, what, like nine or 10 days. <laughs> but I think it's doable. One of, the, one of the concepts I really wanted to bring through is Tucson's like a really big cycling community and so I wanted to tap into that a little bit. I'm a cyclist myself and I kind of wanted to reflect that in some of my work which I haven't done before and so that was one of the main reasons I wanted to include all these guys. They're not on bikes yet but they will be.